you came to me and that I were of me when I was so lost, so lonely. You came to me, took my breath away, showed me the right way, the way to lead. You filled my heart with love, showed me the It's to be with you, you are my one true love, taught me to never judge, now all I want is to be with you. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. Um, I apologize for um, my delay. I am coming from Qom. I tried my best to be on time, but unfortunately, um, anyway, not always it works according to your plan. Mm, mm, as we know, the topic of discussion is uh, the justice of God, and on that issue, we have a lot of questions which still remains, and a lot of topics to be covered on that issue, and um, I will elaborate in some of those points before you ask your questions. <coughs> the first thing that we should know when it comes to Allah's justice is that <coughs> Allah has created us and he doesn't owe anything to anyone. <coughs> we have to understand that. Um, it's just like um, a factory which creates um, a car and a bigger car and a smaller car <clears throat> and then uh, a bicycle or a bike. So Mr. Bicycle cannot go tomorrow and launch a complaint against the factory producer that why I am not created a car. Yeah. <clears throat> because before you be nothing, somebody else decided to give you an identity. What you have is maximum what you can have as a bicycle. And yes, you can complain to the factory that why, I mean, you haven't given me one of the tires, or maybe if, if you are not perfect in your creation, in your nomination, in your class, in your sect, in your part, you can go and complain that my handle doesn't work properly. But you cannot go and complain why I'm not created a car. Or, for example, there is a factory produce carpets. So the carpets are different sizes. We have carpets which is 100 meter. We have carpets which is 12 square meter. There is a carpet of, you know, you need a small carpet for praying. The purpose of carpets are different. You need carpets for a 9-meter room, for a 12-meter room. So factory has to produce different sizes of carpets. So you cannot go and complain why I am a small carpet. Because the whole purpose of you is to be small for that, that particular, what you call, purpose. The same is this variety in creation that we have. The whole situation that we have and the, um, um, the variety in uh, the need for having variety in life. We need different flowers. We need different green. We need different colors. We need different sizes of apple. We need different fruits. 
Just imagine if there was only one type of fruit. Okay? There was no any... You, you had to always have apple. Okay? Yeah, the goodness of that is that the, on the table there is four or five type and you curve. Or you crave. <laughs> not care. You crave for one and you just take the one which you want. So we don't owe. God, sorry, God doesn't owe anything to anyone. He has created you from being nothing. So from nothingness you are something. You owe to him your existence, but God doesn't owe anything to you. So that is the one that we should understand. Because a lot of people are asking questions, I didn't want to come to this world. Why I am this, why I am that. You know, whoever you are, you can ask that question. Okay? But we will talk about it later on, that we have to always look uh, to everything relatively. Uh, oh, I, am I beautiful? Well, I am rich. Well, it's all a relative thing. Compared to what? Compared to who? Compared to an uglier than you, you are very beautiful. Compared to somebody who is more beautiful than you, you are probably a little bit tolerable. They call it salty. Okay? How? Um, rich. Compared to Bill Gates, probably you are poor, but compared to somebody who is getting less salary than you, then you are richer. So we have to look at everything from that, that particular thing. So that's the first fact we have to know. The second thing, difference is not an oppression, as we discussed just now. Yeah, we need different colors of fish. We have different colors of fish. We have to you know, just go to the... Um, uh, seaside and especially if you go to Kish you will see under the the water the most clear water of the world is in Kish and you can go from the boat you can see the very colorful fishes which they are just swimming on the in the water so beautiful so nice we need variety difference is not an oppression that you have created different things different kinds of animals, different kinds of trees, different kinds of flowers, different kinds of fruits. <laughs> the difference is not the problem. The problem is that when you discriminate, okay, both of you are, you are human beings, but one can vote, the other one cannot. Then the discrimination starts. As you see, the man says, only for the gold fishes, not for the black fishes or the, the, the blue fishes. So we have to, you know, the difference has to be there. But in spite of having all of these colors and variety of languages, all human beings must be dealt what? with justice. All of them should have a right of vote, for example. All of them has got right to um, water, to freedom, to a lot of other, you know, goodness of this world. So, the discrimination is the oppression, <coughs> but difference is not the oppression. That discrimination can apply when God wants to um, apply duties. Like, for example, you, um, God wants us all to pray. Okay, but now one is sick. God should not ask him to pray exactly like a healthy person. You see, so God should recognize these differences and he has already recognized it. It was going to be an oppression 
that God apply the same duties to everyone, no matter you are able or you are not. But if Allah looks at your ability and distribute responsibilities, then there is no problem. So difference is necessary. You need difference, otherwise you cannot have life. Difference is the secret of perfection. Without difference, perfection is not possible. For example, just if all um, human beings were all at one level of IQ, and all of you had PhDs, who was going to clean the streets? Of course no one. All of you wanted to a post in the government. All of you wanted to be minister. All of you wanted to be president. Because you can say, listen, I have got PhD. What's the difference between me and him? Should be a difference between you and him for one to become president, for one to become a teacher, for one to become a professor, to, for one to become a doctor, for one to be, to, you know, to, to have variety in life because needs in life is different. And because of different needs that we have in life, we need different kinds of people, different types of people, different specialities, different um, expertise, different doctors. Even, even if you are doctors, we need different doctors. We need different doctors for teeth, for heart, for uh, digestive system, for women, for children, for uh, people with a heart problem. We need different, different. We need cardiologists, we need ophthalmologists, we, have, we need dentists, we need ra radiologists. So we have a lot of difference in society. So variety is the secret of perfection. If difference are not there, if everyone in this world is poor, or everyone is rich, just imagine if you go outside and you see everyone is black or everyone is white. So what a boring life. You cannot choose between two girls to marry. Huh? I mean, the first, the first one who comes is welcome. You cannot choose a husband. You cannot choose a university. You cannot choose an a fruit, you cannot choose a subject, you cannot choose a book, because all books are one book. All fruits are one fruit, all breads, you have to eat all the time the same food. Although you have to live with the same man or the same woman up to the end of your life. But at the end of the day, you have chosen. Yeah? You remember the dying time, the, the, you know, people of my age, when you want, going house to houses for maybe two, three years to find someone. And everyone was saying no, and finally somebody said yes and made the biggest mistakes of her, of her life. <laughs> so it is very important for, for difference it has to be. Difference is an essential part of this universe. Without difference, the life was boring. Perfection was not possible because everyone was perfect. What you wanted? Everyone was perfect. So perfection did not have meaning. Perfection, beauty was not going to have no meaning. Like exactly the world of angels at the moment. You look at the world of angels. Really, if somebody were asking me, you want to be an angel, I will say, sorry, no. Oh, I don't want to be an angel. Such a boring life. You cannot commit a sin. You cannot tell lies. <laughs> you cannot tell lies. How? You cannot have the pleasure of telling lies. <laughs> you see? And uh, it's, you know, you cannot be a better angel. You cannot be a better angel. 
Everyone is perfect, everyone working properly. Everyone follows the duty. As, since morning they come, it's all automatically things happening in their life. There is no joy, there is no pleasure, there is no any perfection. It's not possible to say, because the world, everyone is perfect, so perfection does not have no meaning. You cannot compete with each other to become a better one. Okay? So life without variety was not going to be a good life. So God didn't want such a boring life. God gave us variety and the difference is a part of this life and it is essential for us to be different. <clears throat> difference in everything causes difference in duty and rewards. I told you concerning this also that rewards that Allah is give, going to give and the punishment, it's all relative to the duty that he wants from you. And that duty is also depends on your ability. Richer people has got more duty than the poor people. Healthier people has got more duty than the sick people. Okay? Mm, um, the one who has got more IQ has got less resp bigger responsibility than the people who has got less IQ. People with post positions, power has got more responsibility than the people with no any power and positions. So if Allah share any power or any ability to you to the extent of that ability that Allah has given you, Allah wants you to perform some duties accordingly and that is very very important for us to know. Now one of the biggest question which always you may ask before you ask I'll ask that question that why God has created evil. <clears throat> um, if God has created everything one of those everything is evil. Okay, so uh, why now God should create evil for us to have so many big problems? It's a big question that always people ask questions concerning the existence of evil. Now, concerning the evil there is two very important question issues for us to know. The first thing concerning evil is, brothers and sisters, evil doesn't exist. Wow. So you need, what? Yes, evil doesn't exist. There's no such thing called evil. The existence of evil is non-existential. What that means? It means evil is a non-existential being. Let me explain. What God has created is not light and darkness. No. No, God has only created the light. Now wherever there is light, there is light, there is goodness. The absence of light is what? We call it darkness. But the philosophers say absence of light. What God has created is wealth. So when there is wealth, then you are rich. If not, the absence of money, the absence of wealth, become poverty. Okay? So, what God has created is health. 
Now, if you have health, then you are a healthy person. To that extent that you are not healthy, the non-existence of health become what? A sickness is evil. So evil exists, but the existence of evil is a non-existential. It means the absence of all of those good things that God has created become evil. So that's something which is, has to be understood first. God only created goodness. خداوند فقط خیر را آفرید. و هر جا خیر هست هست. هر کجا خیر نیست نبود خیر میشه شر. نبود خیر میشه شر. چیزی به نام شر وجود نداره. So, the existence of evil is a non-existential being. So, we have to understand that one. The second thing concerning evil is what you call it evil. Or even what you call it goodness. Both of them are relative. Anything you call it as evil, I prove to you that the same thing is good also. Is rain good or not? I didn't hear. Is the rain good or not? Of course, for all of you, but not for that ant, that small animal. Not for a jobless, for a homeless person. Not for a homeless person. A homeless person who streets in a cartoon, in a box, outside, no shelter, he prays, oh Allah, what is this now? While that farmer prays every day, oh Allah, where is your rain? <laughs> so rain is good or bad? Depends. It is relative. Wealth is good or bad? Again, depends who should have wealth. If the wealth is going to take you to Irene prison, like Mr. BZ, then yeah. But if wealth can take you to promote profits, uh, religion, the wealth of Khadija, is good. So it depends if wealth is spent. Children is good or not? Depends. Okay? If it's all like you, it's fine. But if it is somebody who is now busy just now stealing a car, do you want to have such a child? Yeah. Life is good or bad? Okay. Life. I mean, uh, your life. Depends. If you spend it for reaching to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala toward the aim and objectives of creation, then it's fine. It's good. Let us have long life. But if that life is going to be spending on ma'asiyat and uh, sin and taking you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then Imam Zayn al-Abideen alayhi salam prays not me a man like Imam Zayn al-Abideen an infallible Imam he prays O oh Allah in kana umri marta'an lishaytan faqbizni ilayk if my life is a place for shaitan to get fat then take me away I don't want this life so I mean everything that you consider everything that you consider <clears throat> is bad or good it depends so there is no such thing as good absolutely and there is no such thing as bad Absolutely. 
There is no, there is no evil that it is just absolutely evil. Evilness is a relative thing. Everything that you consider evil, the same thing can be a very good for some purpose. For example, snake is evil. Maybe for somebody who has been bitten by a snake, but the same snake poison has been used for anti-cancer, what you call uh, some vaccinations. They are producing out of the poison of the snakes and Scorpios. Think about every single thing that you consider it evil. The same thing is wolf and evil. The same wolf for its children is a mercy. The same wolf for the children is mercy. So everything in this world that you consider it bad, it can be good from another aspect of life. So it depends which perspective in life you are looking and from which corner you are looking and what color of glass you are using. Then the life will change. Change your perspective. Creation of Satan, <laughs> that's the biggest, um, as Imam Khomeini Rahmatullah Ali says, Shaitan of Buzurk, so I, I was searching on the net, I didn't find any, anything better. <laughs> Example of Shaitan as Mr. Obama. Okay, Satan, you, um, you may ask question, I found one which is the statue of evil. But that's not also the case. Shaitan was not created to be an evil. Shaitan did not, was not created by God to be an evil maker. As Allah did not create Mr. Obama to be a mischief maker. As God did not create Mr. Barack Obama to kill Palestinian. As he did not create all of those oppressors of the world to do oppression. But Shaitan was like me and you has choice to be good and choice to be bad. And Shaitan unfortunately choose to be you know, to be a bad person or don't follow the instructions of Allah and then he become rejected like me and you if we also do the same we will be rejected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that is one shaitan was not created by Allah to put him in your case that this shaitan should take you away from Allah that was not the case. That is not the philosophy of creation of shaitan. Shaitan was created to worship him. And for centuries the same shaitan was worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until he asked him to worship the, to uh, do the prostration against Adam and he refused. But while a lot of mankind, mankind is worse than shaitan because um, shaitan هزار مرتبه بهتر زه کو سجده بر آدم و این بر خدا That is something that we have to understand Satan, that is one Satan um, Power is limited Satan power is limited Sh Shaitan does not have no overwhelming power on you that you are not able to control yourself. Did he come and he grab your head 
and he takes your hands and he binds you and until you don't do the job, he won't release you. That's not the case. What maximum shaitan's power is, maximum, is to come and inspire you from within. Talk to your brain, talk to your mind. And just, you know, whisper and propose to you. Yeah, it's better to you to do this. Let's, let's go and watch this movie. Let's have a backbiting. Let us cheat our friend. Let us do this mischief. That's maximum what shaitan can do. Maximum. While human kind of shaitan, human kind of Satan is much more powerful than the jinn type of shaitan. How? Because jinn type of shaitan can only propose. But a man kind of shaitan, he comes to you, he proposes, and then he pays for you also. He drives you to that destination also. He'll tell, I'll, I'll come accompany you. I have been there. It is nice, let's go and do it. And he will take, he pay for you also. He takes you there, he give you transport, he will be your driver. That's why in chapter Nas, Allah says, قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ مَلِكِ النَّاسِ إِلَاهِ النَّاسِ مِنْ شَرِّ الْوَسْوَاسِ الْخَنَّاسِ أَلَّذِي يُوَسْوِسُ فِي صُدُورِ النَّاسِ مِنَ الْجِنَّةِ Five times Allah talks about human type of shaitan. Then one time talks about the shaitan which we are all complaining. That's two. The second, the third part about the shaitan is that I said um, human type of shaitan is worse and, and we explained about it. So those are the issues concerning the Justice of Allah, uh, uh, lots of uh, questions. Uh, let me see what is your questions, and if it is with between your questions, then I will not discuss it in the coming nights. Otherwise, there is other topics that I will, inshallah, cover to fully understand the issue of justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa akhiru da'wana, and alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen, salawat. My Ummah, my Ummah, you will say Rasulullah on that day Even though we've strayed from him and his way My brothers, my sisters in Islam Let's struggle, work and pray